What do you believe it takes to achieve your dreams? And have you been told that you have to complete a bullet point list of things before you can even think of achieving your dreams? Today I'm going to do a Steve Jobs 2005 commencement speech analysis. I'm SJ Harrison, voice and performance coach, and the reason that I've chosen Steve Jobs is that not only do I live in the San Francisco Bay Area near Silicon Valley, and so I'm quite connected and also excited by the very innovative ideas that really are a central part of the dialogue that we have here in California around so many of our challenges and also so many of our solutions. But I think Steve Jobs is also a wonderful example in this speech of someone who is not a great public speaker. Public speaking was not really his training or his focus, but he still manages to give an incredibly impactful and iconic speech. And a lot of it has to do with his own story, the simple, direct and authentic telling of that story, just basically being ahead of his time and able to express those ideas. Before we dive in to that Steve Jobs speech, I would like to ask you to like and subscribe. And also, please check out the free guide to empower your voice that you will find in the text below this video. You can also book a free call with me if you think I can be helpful to you in improving your confidence when showing up for public speaking. Let's have a look at the Steve Jobs speech. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path. Okay, so one of the things about being an innovative thinker is that people like Steve Jobs, who are innovative thinkers, talk about things that are only just coming into the consciousness. And I would say that now is a time when following your heart is talked about an awful lot. I am a firm believer that confidence in oneself and, and belief in one's ability to transform and to transform in ways that are really going to lead you forward, this is how we achieve. And we see this in the greatest innovators of our time and also of past times. Now, from a public speaking perspective, what you may also notice about Steve Jobs is he looks down a lot and it can be more dynamic to be able to really address your audience, to have much more of it memorized so that you're only looking down occasionally. It doesn't matter, right? He has a decent voice. It's not particularly commanding, but his speech is powerful and it's authentic. So although he's looking down, we don't really see his eyes. Again, not a dynamic speaker. The speech itself and the fact that he does use very simple language that is impactful and resonant. He talks about connecting the dots. He talks about the dots again. So there's a nice repetition in the words he's using that really delight the ear. This is working for him here, even though again, He's not an exciting speaker, it doesn't matter. My second story is about love and loss. Okay, so right there, you've got my second story is about love and loss. I think probably everybody in the audience is like this. First of all, it's alliterative. We have love and we have loss. And so it's almost like saying love and death. We want to know what's going to happen, right? These things are very resonant and they are often different ends of the same experience. The love that we have for those who, again, we may lose. Now, in this case, he's going to go on to talk about the loss of Apple for a time um, when he was fired from Apple, the company that he'd created. And then I got fired. How can you get fired from a company you started? Well, as Apple grew, we hired someone who I thought was very talented to run the company with me. And for the first year or so, things went well. But then our visions of the future began to diverge, and eventually we had a falling out. He asks a question. It's the question we're all thinking, but it's also a question that leads us into his experience. One of the things that is wonderful 
in constructing speeches is to really be asking questions of your audience, the question you think they may have at that moment, the question you had if you're telling a personal story at that moment. And then he continues to speak a little bit quickly. So if I were coaching him, I would say, slow down just slightly there to land the thoughts. Again, we're so with him, it doesn't pull us away from what he's saying. And the language is very direct and simple, which is a great choice for someone who may not be the greatest speaker, may not really be a person of um, elaborate words, but is a person of straightforward words sharing their experience. And so at 30, I was out and very publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone and it was devastating. How many people have had this happen recently during the pandemic? The entire focus of my adult life was gone. This is something that's happened again and again. And in fact, it is more and more the normal human experience. And I think it's very helpful to have someone famous like this talking about, again, with tremendous directness, about the vulnerable experience of losing the thing that had been the entire focus of your adult life. I was a very public failure and I even thought about running away from the valley. Again, here's this person that is kind of a byword in success and innovation. Oh, like Steve Jobs, right? We would say, oh, someone like Steve Jobs. This is, this is almost, a, Steve Jobs and Apple are iconic in a number of ways and yet, the irony there is that we use Apple products all the time daily as if they're almost welded, welded to us, those of us who do have Apple products. That's partly around branding, right? The everyday, the useful, the, the ever-present, and then the iconic. And that he felt so ashamed by what had happened, he almost wanted to run away. And it really does speak to the bravery of going for your dreams because the success that can result can also result in a lot of exposure so that when you fail or feel you have failed, which I think is key here, feel that you've failed publicly, it's really tough and it's really intense. But something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. The turn of events at Apple had not changed that one bit. I'd been rejected, but I was still in love. And so I decided to start over. Okay, that is all about getting up again, right? Getting up again when you fall down. And one of the things that I find most noticeable about Steve Jobs' attitude is that I really think that creative individuals, the main thing they have is the ability to understand, maybe not right away, but to really work to understand their setbacks as opportunities. This is how we grow, this is how we advance. And if you're practicing for public speaking, my students, my clients have to go through an awful lot of trial and error before they feel successful. It is always brave to confront where you're weak. It is always brave to confront where you need to improve and to go through that uncomfortable process that eventually leads to transformation. It is always worthwhile to go through that process of transformation to achieve your goals and your dreams. And again, it is not about having an easy path. I mean, Steve Jobs was adopted. He wasn't born to a family who had privilege. He was very creative and he dared. And any of us potentially can do the same. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. So think about the changes you've had over these last few years. How have you been able to turn some of those into opportunities? And is there a way in which your own experience can inspire others? If you're someone who wants to speak and share your message, how can you use those apparent setbacks like Steve Jobs is doing here to truly inspire others? Having that external goal towards your audience can also help take the pressure off of our speaking abilities, of feeling we have to be perfect when we show up. It's also about that connection with audience. What do I want to share with them that could be helpful? And that was certainly the motivating force, I would say, of Steve creating this speech. What can I say to these graduates that's going to help them as they go out into the world and inevitably have setbacks? The heaviness of being successful, 
was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. Here is being able to look back and see, oh, those things that happened to me were the best things that happened, and here's what it led to. But here I say again, here's what it led to because of how he decided to hold that experience. He didn't give up. He redirected his focus. He started next and Pixar and he fell in love with the woman he married and was very happy with until his death. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometime life, sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. Wow. I have found this to be profoundly true on all counts. So here he goes on to talk about death, which is quite resonant and poignant as he has cancer at that time. Some of the things he says are these. I am going to read them from the screen. He says, remembering that you are going to die. You are already naked. Do what you love. That's an abbreviation of what he said. No one wants to die, but death is the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent making way for the new. So this can also have to do with the many little deaths that we have in life when we have to change our work, change where we live, um, change relationships, where relationships with people maybe drift apart. All of these are the little deaths of life that in many ways prepare us for the greater one. So a life well lived is one in which I think we're always somewhat conscious that we're going to die without being uh, morbidly fearful of it. But just if I were to die tomorrow, would I feel okay about my reaction with this person? Would I feel okay about where I stand with my loved ones? This is something that I do think about a lot. And I honestly feel it's one of the things that is allowing me at this time in my life to lead the most happy life possible. That's the end of this analysis for today. I encourage you to check out the whole speech. It's about 15 minutes, absolutely worth worth listening to. And stay tuned for my next video coming up this month. I will be doing both an analysis of artistic work and a short interview with Turkish interdisciplinary artist Seslenin Adam. And Seslenin Adam is his professional name, which loosely translated, I understand, means a man's voice calling. It's one way of translating his name. And his ethos is very much around the voice of love and calling with that voice of love to others. So please do check out that interview coming up at the end of the month. Have a look at my free guide below, as well as my booking link. And here's to unlocking your performance power. Do drop me a line or do book with me if you think I can help you. And we can discuss that face to face.